Hello, hello, Edson Oliver here. This is another interview for the DNN Summit 2018. And I also call this talk, I also call this interview, I also call this chat, whatever it is. But it's the fifth one, and most likely it's the last one. So let's really take advantage of our two guests today. And it's interesting because this time around, differently from, from other conversations that I had, which was usually developers, uh, hardcore developers and, and marketers. Today we have two more, I, I'll, I'll say, geared towards the UI side of things. You know, I, I know Tracy for a long time and again, always, always great to see his design experience there. And I, I, I know Lee as well and Lee has even created some uh, training tutorials for, for DNN Hero in the past. So very good to have two UI driven individuals here. So let, let me start with you, Tracy. Uh, can you give us, you know, a uh, little spiel here, a little intro, one minute intro about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I started using, uh, working with DNN um, when it was still iBuySpy Portal, way back, man. So um, I've been using it for quite a while. I uh, created the company T Works in 2005. So since then, we've been building. DNN themes, that's really what we're, where it all started for me was building DNN themes on my own. And then seeing a bigger opportunity as people started buying themes and seeing them and asking us to, or asking me to build websites and stuff like that. So in 2005, I created T-Works uh, and brought just one guy full-time on at, at first um, and did everything ourselves for the first couple of years. And then um, things kind of expanded past that. So um, to what it is today, I still have just a very small team, just a couple people full time now, virtual. Um, um, one guy that I just found a couple of months ago, his name is Lucas Bafatakis. I think some people might know him in the DNA community. Guy's great. Was, he's such a good find for me. So uh, we, we work together every day, very closely, all day long, doing different DNA projects and working on some other stuff with uh, with click funnels and other stuff because I also have a. Um, a marketing uh, or a Facebook ad agency called Blue Penguin Media that we just that we just kind of uh, launched like about a month ago. So, um, uh, but I've been using DNN since its inception and been in the community a long time. I've spoken on a lot of events and stuff like that. So, I've been here for a while. You know. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I don't want to dig too deep yet into your session, but I would say, what qualifies you to talk about liquid content? What What's your story there with liquid content? Yeah, it's a good question and a fair question. So um, for the past year or so, we've been working on, um, we worked on several projects with Dean and um, as uh, kind of the, the, one of their design teams. So we had the opportunity to, to get into uh, working with the Pope, specifically Pope content and liquid content. So in the, for the past year or so, we've been working a lot with that and um, seeing what, is, what, what that's capable of. And I got to tell you that we, we, we really, really like working with liquid content inside of a book. Got it. Awesome. And to finalize your, your, your first round here, who's the audience for your session? Who are you looking for to have on your session? Yeah. Um, um, probably people that work for companies that are responsible for managing their company's website. Um, we've worked with several clients over the last several months that are maybe a, a team of five or six. Uh, of their kind of their, their marketing team or their, their content team who are responsible for updating their website on, a, on an ongoing basis. So that would be a good target audience for the people to, that, that are attending uh, in the DNN Summit, but also for um, developers, people like Lee or other, other, other people in the DNN community that are building websites for their own client base. So that might not um, have used a vote before, so they haven't even maybe seen liquid content. Got to it. Know, to know it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Lee, let's go. Let's go to you now. Um, I know that you don't go as far as I buy spy. I'm quite sure you don't go as far as as, as Trace, you know. But uh, but give us give us an intro about yourself, what you have done in the DNA space, please. Sure. Uh, so my name is Lee Wise. I work for uh, Gravity Works, um, front end developer, and I've been with uh, DNN. Uh, 2010, uh, so it was probably DNN uh, five, uh, I think is the oldest that I've I've messed with. Uh, so I'm definitely glad of where it's at now. It was uh, a little rough back then, <laughs> uh, but still enjoyed it. Yeah. Awesome. And 
And in the title of your, I don't want to dig deep right now yet, but it's be lazy and get more done. I would say, how do you qualify, you know, to talk about laziness? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, and that, that's kind of a, a joke uh, among some of my uh, coworkers is a lot of times they're like, hey, look, I found a new way to get something done. They're like, yeah, because you're lazy, right? I'm like, exactly. Uh, you know, if, if I find myself doing the same task multiple times or very similar tasks, uh, you know, I, I like to try to really like, how can I not do that? <laughs> I get it. No, it, it makes sense. And again, if you can automate something, why not? Now, what, who's the audience of, of, of your session there? Are you talking about developers? Are you talking about UI, UX people, backend developers? Who's the audience? Uh, it's probably going to be mostly um, front-end developers, um, but it, it's it's not the typical uh, design kind of code. It is it is very uh, logical kind of code. So maybe some back-end developers, but I think a lot of back-end devs might already be uh, using uh, some of these practices and technologies, uh, but maybe not. Uh, so I think if, if there are back-end devs that uh, feel like they are doing everything manually, or even if they're they're new to back-end dev, then, then this might be useful, but uh, primarily uh, front-end people. Got it, got it. Okay, uh, Tracy, let me go back to you. On, on your session description, you, you talk about the fact that liquid content is a game changer. How, how, how does that... How, how is liquid content a game changer for, in your opinion? I think it's a game changer because um, I, I hate to tell this to third party module developers, but I think liquid content is going to make a lot of modules obsolete simply because the way that you can basically, the way I look at it kind of is, is your ability to create your own custom modules kind of inside evoke inside the interface. Um, so it eliminates the need for other core, certainly other, other core DNN modules, like the links module, announcements module, stuff like that. Um, but other third party modules as well, because like I said, you can build stuff on the fly within, within a book using liquid content. It's crazy. It's crazy. I see. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't know whether or not you have experience with those other tools, but we cannot talk about liquid content and not talk about the other equivalents or the other competitors equivalents you know that are the types of the other modules that are out there in this in the in kind of the same space you know and on that i'm going to include two sex content i'm going to include open content i'm going to include xmod pro actually it's funny enough uh right now there is a discussion going on in the facebook uh dnn group exactly about that you know talking about those different building modules and how do they compare to each other and i don't know if there was anyone there talking about liquid content but but give me your two cents about those other modules and where liquid liquid content fits into that into this discussion you know? yeah you know I, I i'll be honest i don't have uh, um any experience with open content at all um, I've just, I read some posts uh, last week about uh, probably the same post you read on Facebook in the Facebook group about open content. And I, I've constantly seen Daniel's posts about Too Sexy. So I'm, I've been aware of Too Sexy for quite a while. Lucas, who's on our, who's on my team, has, is, is very familiar with it. He's used that. But from, from what I understand with Too Sexy, it's more developer centric where liquid content, having the, having the opportunity to, to work inside in, directly in, in Evoke, where I, I think there's a lot of people in, in the community that use platform and use, use platform forever. So they haven't had the opportunity to work with Evoke, to actually use liquid content, you know, as it is inside Evoke, to understand how use, like front end user friendly it really is. Whereas too sexy content, and I know I've, I've had a conversation with Daniel too, that it's more developer centric. So you kind of have to know some scripting and, and some more technical stuff to really take advantage of too sexy and make that work the way you want it. So that's that's my only experience with the with those others. Like I said, open content, zero. Uh, too sexy, just knowing that it is more developer centric. Guys, actually, you, I, I, I share the same opinion. I think that something like uh, Too Sexy Content is a little bit more driven towards the more techie savvy uh, audience out there. Now, let me let me ask you that. I know that 
I think it's still a plan to move liquid content to the Disney platform. How, how do you see that? Well, I, I, I hear it's going to happen in, in, in the uh, second quarter. And okay. I'm actually really pleased about that because being a front end developer, I've never been this heavy coder. You know what I mean? So, I mean, in the beginning years of DNN, I had to create my own themes and I learned all, all the code, you know, from, from scratch myself and how to do all the HTML and some basic JavaScript and a lot of CSS, but I'm kind of removed from that level of detail in, in, in coding. So I, I like to do things as a front end perspective that are really, really easy to do, right? So that's, again, that's why I gravitated towards liquid content inside of Evoke because it does make things extremely easy. You don't have to be a coder build some really cool looking components on your pages and share content across your site and do all kinds of really, really neat stuff with it. Okay, got it. Makes sense. And again, I'm looking forward to explore more of liquid content once it reaches the DN platform. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the most common use case of, of liquid content? When, what is the most common use case of liquid content? Well, we've used it a number of ways, but um, a couple of, one way that we've used it, um, which I, is really cool is that, um, for example, when you create, um, when you create a page in DNN and you're looking at a layout, maybe it's two, two columns of content on the right and left, and maybe you've got some like, like a, a hero component with a slider. Maybe you've got um, some testimonials that kind of slide through on the bottom, whatever. Um, typically in the past with DNN, you have to use separate modules to do all that stuff with, or you just write all the HTML and stick it in one module, which nobody wants to do anyway, because that kind of defeats the purpose of DNN in the first place. So you have to put a bunch of modules on the page, a bunch of HTML modules, maybe use a link module, maybe use other third party or other core modules to kind of construct your page. Whereas liquid content, we can say, okay, we've got that kind of same structure of the page and we can include all of that content that might be placed in separate modules. We can include all of that content as content types inside of liquid content. And then we can say, we can create a visualizer, which kind of defines the display of our content on a page. And we can place that on a page and say, um, insert the, this, this little chunk of the, all this content into that one and, and display it here. Then take you know this piece of content within this, this whole layout structure and put it in a different visualizer as a hero. So we can take, um, for example, a lot of content that we, we, might, we might want to display one way on, 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 on one page and maybe just display portions of that on, on separate pages, but it's all kind of integrated as content items that we can choose to display on different pages any way we want to. Got so it. for example, like a, like a, for a corporate site, using like a case studies area um, has been like really cool because typically with a case study, you might have a video, you might have images that, that, that show work done. Um, and you might have a lot of copy text and stuff, paragraphs or whatever. So instead of using separate modules or one big module to stick that on a page, we, we create diff different content types with, with images and videos and text and, and what have you. And then we decide with a visualizer, which part of all this stuff do we want to display here? Got and it. so like on, um, like on a homepage, with, with case studies, you might have like several logos of the companies that you've worked with. And, and when you click on a logo on, the, on a home page, you might just show four or five logos. Click on a logo, it takes you to a page that talks a little bit more in detail about that, that specific client. And then if you want to see the full case study, you click on a button and you go to a page that has the full case study. All of the content that's, um, that, that comprises all of the, the, the case study information, but then on the home page, you're just showing the logos on, on, on an interior page, you're just showing the logo and a little, and a, and a video or, or a brief synopsis. And then you can click more to go to the full case studies page with all of that content there. So that's, uh, that's the way we like to use liquid content. You know, I mean, what you're describing there, you're describing a uh, separation of concerns. You know, you have the data in your site and you have the the as as it's called within liquid content the visualizer on the other side so it, so you separate how it's presented to the date itself which is which is great i love that yeah. uh lee let's talk a little bit about about you here about actually about your session you talk about you know repetitive tasks boring tasks what what tasks are those what repetitive tasks what boring tasks are those that you would like to get rid of them you know um 
I mean, it could be anything. Uh, for for all front end developers, I mean, there's there's things like uh, auto prefixes, um, right? So that's where you have to do uh, a special line of code uh, in your CSS for IE and Chrome and Firefox and Opera. Um, so, so that's something that you have to do every time. Uh, you know, if you use a, a certain CSS attribute, you got to do the prefixes for every single one. Uh, and there's things already like that uh, that handle that in Gulp or Grunt. Um, but that'd be an example of, you know, that's something that you have to do over and over again. And someone uh, found a way to cut that out. Um, I honestly want to look at even kind of uh, broader, even beyond just, uh, you know, your, your CSS code. Um, you know, one example uh, that I do is, uh, I have to SSH into uh, you know a server that we use, um, and I'd always forget you know what the uh, the address was and you know how, you know getting in there and I'd have to reference a file. Uh, so I made a, a, a terminal alias for that. So I type in like three letters uh, and it connects me. Now I still got to type in the password. Uh, I'm still trying to work out with our uh, backend devs see if we can get some uh, keyless uh, entry into that, but. Uh, so that's that's something I you know I'm always trying to think you know what's something that I do every day. Uh, it, it doesn't even have to be code related. Got it. Got it. Just maybe if it's emails. Yeah. Just something <laughs> that will make your life easier, and uh, with a click of a button or a quick command, you can you can execute that. I like that. I like that. So I'm assuming that what you're going to be talking in this session is very much you know interrelated to what you do on a daily basis. So let, let me say on a typical day, what is your workflow? What is the workflow of a Lee Wise, you know, on a typical day? Uh, check my emails, check Slack messages, um, check a resource document to see, you know, what projects are supposed to work on this week and, and what's top priority. Uh, you know, all that kind of boring stuff, open up my, uh, time tracking document, um, you know, Trello, Basecamp, open up Gmail, all these tabs and just get everything set up to work. Uh, now, now let, let me go to a project specifically, you know, if you are, if you are about to get started working in a particular project and again, the word project can mean you no know, different things here, but, but, uh, what kind of tools, what kind of, uh, what do you use typically, you know, to get a project done? Maybe, maybe it's a page that you need to put together. Maybe it's a functionality that you need to put together. What, what, what are the tools that you, you involve on doing that? You know, to to get working on a project. Yes. Um, I mean, I'll uh, uh, pull down a repo unless I already have it, and open it up in my text editor, and uh, yeah, get to work. Um, <laughs> what kind of UI? Yeah. What kind of UI are you using there? And what kind of ID ID? I mean, is there is there an interface that you would rather be using? I mean, so I, I use uh, Sublime. Uh, I like it. I'm happy with it. It does everything I need. Um, and then of course I have a terminal running so that I can run uh, um, I can run Gulp and I can also uh, do a local uh, server. Uh, for a, uh, a pattern library. Got it. Okay. You mentioned on your description, you mentioned about, uh, no shell scripts, no JS. How, how do they, how do they, how do you use each one? How, actually, how do you choose the right tool for the right automation then? Um, you know, I don't know that if I do, <laughs> um, I, I use what I know. Um, right. I, I think that's, that's, sometimes better than, than finding the absolute perfect best solution, just finding something that, that works and that you can use. Uh, you know, sure, maybe it's it would be better if I did it in Python, but I don't know Python. I get it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna waste my time learning a new programming language just to tackle, you know, a 10 minute task. Got it. Uh, so to answer your question, it may not be the best way to do no, it. No, actually, but I'll, it's the best I'll... Way for you not necessarily talking about the best, but, but again, the best for you, the best tool, because usually when we talk to a professional, you know, they have a set of tools that they would rather be used instead of some other tools, you know? So again, it's, it's, uh, I'm usually curious about 
what your tool belt is composed. Now, how how is your tool belt? You know, I see. Yeah, so I like I like Node uh, because it could do some of these things I was wanting to do, and it's JavaScript. I know JavaScript because I'm a front end developer. Maybe I'm not the best at Node, uh, but you know it works. Uh, and, and then the working with Shell was definitely new to me. Um, but I saw that it could do some tasks. Uh, some, something I'll talk about in the session is that uh, I did spend uh, a good chunk of time uh, learning how to do something uh, with, with some bash scripts. Uh, but then I did the math on how much time it'll save me. You know, it'll save me five minutes every day. So I'll recoup my time in about six months. So it was, it was worth it to spend a ton of time at first. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. I like I like automation. I like making good use of our time. You know, uh, uh, Tracy. Let me get back to you here. Uh, we we spoke a little bit about you know the most common use cases of liquid content. But what about? I mean, did you come across any unusual use of liquid content? I mean, anything that oh, I didn't know that we would, we would be able to do that with liquid content. Anything comes to mind about that? Um. Not really, not really. I mean, we've been we've 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 got a couple of big projects going on right now where um, um, it's it's uh, there are a lot of components that we kind of have to think through first. You know what I mean? And um, once we pretty much whatever we can kind of get through and 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 kind of define what needs to happen, we can find a way to build a liquid content. You know what I mean? So whether it's from you know simple. Um, like a slider with a, with a hero on several images and, and with a video embedded to, um, I mean, you pretty much name it. We, we, we found that we can, you know, do it with liquid content. So Got uh, it. I don't see, you know, I don't, I don't, there, there are not a lot of limitations there right now. You know what I mean? So, so let me ask you, let me ask you this. Usually when you're talking about data driven modules, like liquid content or open content or two sex content or X mod pro there is, a very common use case is you have, uh, let's say you have a list and you click on, on one of the, the items like, uh, you know, uh, directory and you click on one of the items and then you go and see the details of that entry there. Uh, how, how does liquid content handle friendly URLs? Is the detailed view of uh, like what I'm explaining here, is it possible to have a friendly URL for that detailed view out of the box with liquid content? I don't know, to be honest with you. Mm. I do not know that answer. Got it. No, 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 no problem. No problem. Because the reason why I'm, uh, I ask that is because usually it's a very, it's a very common, you know, use case. You have a, a list view and a detail view. And in the detail view, ideally, the URL should be, you know, if we are talking about, you know, uh, a directory of employees, ideally the URL would have the employee name over there, you know? So I was wondering if, uh, if there was any mechanism that would handle friendly URLs out of the box with liquid content, but that's fine. Let me ask you that. Usually you said that liquid content is a very user-friendly, you know, type of, uh, of tool. And sometimes with those very user-friendly type of types of tools, uh, when you try to do something a little bit more complex, when you want to achieve something a little bit more, more, you know, trickier, uh, you, you, you come to find roadblocks very, uh, you know, very frequently. And I guess that based on what you uh, mentioned before, it does seem to be your case. So my, my point is, are we able as developers to extend and, and do some coding there to, I'm not saying that open the source codes and modify things there. I'm just saying that, is it flexible enough for someone that does coding to be able to to do something slightly more trickier uh, when it comes to liquid content. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's that's where, where, where you can work in the visualizer. So there's a part in the visualizer where you can totally customize the look and feel of the content you're, you're displaying on a page. And you can, there's a lot of things you can do there with JavaScript and CSS um, using kind of uh, tokens, liquid content tokens to, to inject uh, some, a lot of your different items and stuff. So yeah, you can, you can go crazy with it. Awesome. Awesome. Lee, I'm going to, I'm going to, by the way, if any one of you guys have questions to each other, by all means, ask me to stop and you can interrogate each other. But, uh, aside of that, 
Uh, Lee. What's the difference between... Go ahead, Lee. You said something there? No, 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 I'm, no, no I'm responding. <laughs> okay, no worries. Uh, what's the difference between a front-end developer and a UI UX designer? Oh, <laughs> uh... I should, should, I, 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 should, I, should I have sent this up front to you? I mean, did I? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I hate some of those titles because I, I feel like everyone has a, a different definition for them. Uh, they're generally around this, the same kind of idea, but, you know, people will, will disagree on, on what they, they entail. Um, in my mind, uh, UI, UX designer might be... Um, someone who actually, you know, designs that they lay it out in Photoshop sketch, you know, whatever you're using, um, they do wireframes and all that. Um, and so in my mind, that's UI UX designer. And then a front end developer is actually touches code, um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So that, that makes sense. So, so in a way, UI UI UX designer, they don't necessarily need to, I mean, of course, it depends the role in the organization, but they don't, they, they may not code, correct? That's, that's my opinion. Some, some people might call themselves UI UX designers and they do code. Uh, but it. yeah, to me, to me, that, that, that easy definition is, is are you a designer or developer um, would determine if you're coding or not. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Now let's talk, I know the difference and it's pretty obvious, but now let's talk about front-end developers and back-end developers. Let, let me tell you a <laughs> okay. story. Let me tell you a story. Right now we are working with a project that we have a bunch of back-end developers trying to do front-end development. Let me tell you, it's a mess. It's hell. <laughs> it's horrible. <That> never <laughs> so my question is, can a back-end developer do front-end development? Uh... Technically, yes. I mean, uh, I think, you know, a, a backend developer will look at it and see, hey, it's code. I know how to code. Uh, and so, yeah, they can they can do front end development. Uh, but I think part of front end development does have that design aspect uh, to it. You are doing code, but you're making uh, decisions in your code uh, based on the design, which I think a backend developer is not used to. Uh, that kind of thought process. So maybe they, they know how to uh, make it work, but it may not look very good. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So, so what do you recommend? And I know that we're going beyond your session here, but I want to explore a little bit about your, you know, your front end expertise here. So what would you recommend for someone, you know, a back end developer, a coder, a hardcore coder, that wants to develop their front-end skills? I mean, what's, what's some of the things that you'd recommend them to get, to get, to know, to get started, to become a good, a reasonably good front-end developer? Uh, so I don't think that the technical aspect is, is really an issue, like knowing, you know, what the, the syntax is, the, the CSS attributes and all that. I think that's probably pretty easy uh, for a backend dev to, to figure out. Um, so it's really the design part. So um, looking at uh, examples, uh, maybe not even code, but look at something that looks good and then try to replicate it uh, using uh, code pen uh, is a good good way to, to practice, a good sandbox. Got uh, it. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, Tracy, you seem to have some opinions there. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't think a developer should try to be a designer too. The very <laughs> have been yeah. successful doing both. And we've had a lot of experience with working with developers and designers on both sides of it. And it just doesn't work hardly ever. So my 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 recommendation would be if you're a developer, you want to improve your fine skills, just find somebody, just find a good designer to work with and do it. <laughs> yeah. You focus on what you do best and you know you lose a lot less hair that way too. So I definitely agree. I, I, I like the idea of, of uh, specializing in it and separating the different aspects of the project. But if someone just absolutely insists that their back end dev is going to do front end work, <laughs> then, then yeah, practice. It will awesome. probably be painful, but you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, so guys, what we're hearing here is that uh, if you are a back end developer, you better stick to, to back end. You better stick to behind the scenes. Don't come to the front. <laughs> Don't come to the front. 
Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to have problems there. Well, it's and same for front end devs. I, I find myself trying to do C sharp, and it takes me way too long. And then some of the other guys look at him like, "Yeah, don't do that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you know, like myself, when when I started, you know, working with DNN in the early years, I had to do everything myself. And I, I really wasn't a coder, so I had to teach myself all all these new skills. When I was really more of a designer, I always have been. So it 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 didn't come easy, but. I don't want to, that's not where I want to live. You know, I'm more of a creative type person. So I don't want to be stuck in doing code. It's just, I can't, I can't sit still long enough for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I'm very visual. So I, I can't, I, I won't even try to go there anymore. You know what I mean? So it's just a waste for me. So. Awesome. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Each, each one of us will have, you know, strengths and weaknesses and clearly back end and front end is a, are two very distinct games here yeah for sure yeah uh lee lee i'm 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 curious about because that tells me you know what else you are you know interested do you have any any side project in on your spare time if you have spare time i'm not sure how <laughs> your life goes there but is there any side project is there, is there anything that uh you know keeps you up at night and say, hey, I have to figure this thing out here. What is it? <laughs> if there is anything. Yeah, I have way too many, honestly, um, <laughs> which is fun because I don't have any spare time. I don't know if you knew, but I actually have a, uh, a newborn son. Mm -hmm. uh, three three weeks today. Congratulations. So, I, I was not yeah. aware of that. So keeping me busy. Um, but yeah, like one of the... Uh, um, I will demo one of my side projects. Hopefully, it'll be closer to completion by the conference, but awesome. uh, maybe not. But it, it is along the lines of, of automating things um, uh, with with Node. Uh, so in, in that, it's it's the idea that I can type a couple commands and then it, it runs uh, a, a slew of functions for me that uh, I do every time I start a project. Um, Got so. it. So you're you're coming up with a prompt. 2.0. I mean, you, you know about prompt, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know what, what's I, prompt. I, no, prompt is a is a DNN uh, extension. I'm not. It's that was uh, created by uh, Kelly Ford. Kelly Ford. Kelly, I almost forgot your name, Kelly. I don't know why, but yeah, prompt is is a tool for automating some of some of the backend functions of DNN. So I guess that you are. You know, so I'm looking forward to see what you come up with by, uh, which has nothing to do with prompts. Again, this was just a, a side <laughs> note here. Uh, okay, great. So, I mean, if whenever you want to share more about that, by all means, we are looking forward to that. Tracy, let me go back here to you. Let me ask you, what is the one thing that you want people leave the session? A first glance into liquid content, a CMS game changer, knowing about what is the one thing wow um understanding there's a new better way to do dnn i really that's what it comes down to for me you know what i mean and for us using liquid content so and i mean you know you talked earlier about that getting rolled into the in, in the platform and um supposedly that's happening in quarter two and i'm really happy about that because mo a lot of people in the community probably don't work with evoke Right? And I kind of touched upon this a little bit earlier. Um, they probably don't work with like, Evoke, so they maybe haven't seen liquid content and, and been able to work with that. Um, uh, what about you, Lee? Have you worked with liquid content at all? I have not. I've done uh, too sexy content. Too sexy, okay. So, and, and I know too sexy is very flexible, right? Can, can you talk, maybe you can talk to that better than, than, better than I could because I, we just, I simply haven't used it. Uh, I, I like it. it. It definitely works for for what we need. In fact, for a while, I was using a, a form and list, um, which was easier than than too sexy content, but it wasn't as powerful. So you kind of had that trade off. Yeah, I think um, that uh, you know, liquid content may may um, be in the same realm there as it's easier, but you, you you might not be able to extend it as easily and as far as you can with like something like too sexy because it's more developer centric. So, um, but but. Really, for me, um, Adderson is, is liquid content makes it easy for you to build. And I, I again, I'll say it kind of your own modules on the fly. 
So you can go into liquid content, drag and drop all of your fields and your dif different types of elements that you want to, to show content through and define how those are, how those are displayed. So it's almost kind of like a, it's a drag and drop interface to create simple forms that create your liquid content components and then be able to display those how you want in, in different situations. So that, that's what I would want people to, to walk away with, with the idea of, wow, this DNN just got a lot easier, you know, and I don't have to worry about necessarily having all of these other modules installed in my DNN site, you know, making it more heavy to do what I want to do. You know what I mean? And I don't necessarily have to look for a developer that has the skills to do that when I don't. So um, that's, it's ease of use, man. DNN just got a lot easier with, with liquid content. That's why I'm so happy that it's being rolled in the platform because now everyone will have that, those two tools available to them. So, um, and as we're talking, it's it's more front end user friendly, which is great. Awesome, awesome, Tris. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Lee, same thing for you. On your session, be lazy and get more done. What is the one thing that you want people to leave that session knowing? Uh, I think I want people to just kind of walk away and uh, kind of just audit their their daily workflow and and what what can be cut out. Uh, Typically in the past uh, conferences, when I've done uh, talks, they've been very uh, technical tutorial uh, driven. You know, here's what I did, here's how I did it, and the steps. Uh, and this one's a little bit different. I will show uh, how I did some things, uh, but I don't think people will have the same needs as I do. Uh, so really, I want people to to really uh, evaluate their their process, what they're doing, and. Uh, maybe, you know, pull a little bit from what I did and make it fit their needs. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great, guys. So that's really it. Uh, you know, with our one thing, I, I like to, I would like to close our conversation today. Anything else that uh, you, Tracy, that you may not have had a chance to mention about, you know, about, about your session or maybe beyond the session as well? Anything else there? Yeah, yeah. A couple of things, actually. Earlier, you asked me about friendly URLs using liquid content. And I said, I didn't know because I didn't then, but I, one of my developers, Alessandra, I have her on my, her, my computer over here. And, and um, just to confirm with her, she said from your girls work out of the box, it automatically follows the, the pages in link hierarchy of the site. So it's automatic, awesome. which is great. So um, that's definitive. So um, the other thing was, uh, as you and I, as you know, Anderson, you and I have talked about um, a training program that we have kind of been working on for DNN, which I think the community is, is needed for a long, long time. And I wish I had done it 10 years ago, you know, but um, we're, we're working on a, a, a training program for DNN um, with liquid content and all kinds of, you know, DNN administration themes, kind of the whole, the, the whole ball of wax, except for module development. It's not what the course does. It's more for what we've been talking about today, front end developers, teams that are building their own websites, um, uh, other people in the community that are building websites for their own clients as an agency, something like that. And um, that should be released just prior to the conference. I'm really excited about it. Wow, awesome, awesome. Actually, that was one of the things that I, I had in mind to ask you about, but I said, you know what, I don't want to put him on the spot right now, but great that uh, you came forward and you mentioned that, Tracy. That, that's yeah. great news, you know? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting there. That's for sure. A lot of work though, but hey, we're getting there. I believe, I believe so, I know. Lee, how about yourself? Anything before we say our goodbyes? Uh, yeah, I was going to say that, um, uh, you know, I like that, that the conference has kind of opened up, that it's not all specifically DNN, that it is, uh, you know, broader in, in web development. And uh, that's what I, I'm going to try to do this year is that it uh, doesn't strictly apply to DNN. Um, I will pull in some aspects, how I'm using it with DNN. Uh, but if you used uh, some other CMS or no CMS at all, uh, that this is still applicable. Awesome, awesome. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Lee. See you both at DNN uh, Summit 2018. And uh, that's it. Talk to you soon. Bye.